Some people look at the moon and see cheese. Grown-ups look at it and fall in love. I used to look at the moon and see a weird face. But now, all I see is pizza. My name is Eddie. I live in New York City. East Harlem to be exact. Here's where I go to school, PS72. School's tough, but it's a lot more fun ever since I got a teacher named Miss Tolliver. Miss Tolliver makes us keep a journal. I want you to write about what you learned today. I took the idea and ran with it. My mom has lots of names for this mess, but I call it my files. Olives, anchovies, and extra pepperoni, just as you like it. This morning started out really good. And would you like a chocolate shake now or after breakfast, sir? Then I woke up. But it was okay, because Mom made pancakes. And for breakfast, the only thing better than pancakes it's pizza. It's a grand day for pizza. It's a long, day. The world's all aglow. And they want to know what's wrong. In Miss Tolliver's class, it was Lombardini Day. Esposito Lombardini. She said this guy Lombardini brought the first pizza to America in 1905. You know what you're going to do today? No. You're all going to make pizza! What a great way to start a math class. Pepperoni, mushrooms, black olives, anchovies. Miss Tolliver must have had the same dream I had. I love it. It almost looks like a face, James, like your face. Yeah. Look at this. Then it was time to cut up our cut pizzas. Up pizzas. But not just anyway, the Miss T way. So you're the eighth table. This table, you're the twelfth. Over here, one fourth. And over here, one sixth. How many pieces will you have? Twelve, eight, eight six, six, four. Cut up your pizza, please. After we cut up our pizzas, pizzas down. Miss T wanted us to trade slices with each other. She called it the Great Pizza Swap. The idea was to trade equal amounts of pizza, even though we all cut our pizzas into different fractions. So I'm gonna give you one six, and what would Jeanette have to give me back? Two twelve. Two twelve, and that would be a fair swap. Now with the two sixes. How many twelfths would I now need to have two sixes? You would need four twelfths. Okay, and that would be a fair swap. If you did it right, you ended up with a whole pizza. No more, no less. It has to be uniquely different from the one that you started out with. And so the swap began. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, swap! The trading floor was open for action. Remember, you've got to get a whole pie that has 
different pieces. That's it, stop. Swap has ended. Some of us ended up with whole pizza pies. Is it a whole pie? Let's see, let's see. And some didn't. <laughs> How'd she get all of these? She cheated. No, 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 this is mine. Somebody stole mine. They robbed me. Okay, now check out your journal. But we all learned that there's a lot more to pizza than just eating it. Anyway, this fraction stuff was making me hungry. So I decided to check it out at Sal's. I think Sal has the best slice in East Harlem. Sal's cool. He calls himself the king of... Dough. The secret's in the dough. And my dough's the best dough because I know dough. See? Just the right amounts of flour, water, and yeast. And if the fractions are off, well, you might as well throw your anchovies on cardboard. I'll tell you, it's the dough that makes the pizza. Hand me the pepperoni. There they were the again. Olives, Fraction. More garlic. Nice too, but Seems like everyone the uses them. We're gonna do a rack of lamb, we're gonna do a vegetable Napoleon, and we're gonna do a salmon. That guy's a chef. Actually, he's an executive chef. I'm the head top cook. That means I control all food activities in the kitchen. I organize the menu, I go to the food for it, I train my staff, and I delegate to different individuals who's to do what. Hors d'oeuvres, so I need some California rolls. I'm like an orchestra leader. There's a lot of playing with the fractions. Half of a cup to a quarter of a cup or an eighth of a cup, tablespoons and teaspoons, how many ounces are in a cup. You have a recipe that feeds 10. And how do you get it if you're gonna feed two? Or how are you gonna get it if it's gonna feed 2,000? You could either have way too much or not enough. What are you gonna do? fractions. It's so important that you know about that. I see things. I have visions in my mind about how a dish should come out. It's not about just putting a steak on a plate and a baked potato and then taking some vegetables just throw them on there, scoop them on there. It's not about that anymore. Because it's being creative. Not only does it taste good, but it's a look good. Make sure every plate goes out the way I want it. And people can recognize it. it took some time. Plates come to the table. You want people to ooh and up. Ah, wow, look, how did you do that? Otherwise, if it's not exciting to them, then they could have stayed home and done it themselves and saved themselves some money. And it's very exciting to me. It made somebody's day. That's what's important to me. I'll tell you another secret. Most joints slice a medium into eighths. I cut them into ninths to get more slices. Know what I mean? Like I said, Sal's cool. By the way, I figured out a way to slice a pizza into tenths. Can't wait to tell him. So I left Sal's and headed over to Vincent's Photoshop. I needed some professional items. Stuff us pros never like to be without. Hey, Eddie, you forgot film. Can't win that Pulitzer without filming the camera, right? Vincent knows about things. Here, why don't you take a couple of rolls of Plus X and a couple of rolls Plus X is a cool type of black and white film. All us pros use it. It's right here on the box. Looks like you're all set. I'll see you next time. Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Tony's a pro photographer. I need to have it run right away. Sure, right away. I showed him some pictures I took last weekend. Thought he could help me out. Hmm. These pictures are blurry, Eddie. You needed to use a faster shutter speed. What did you shoot these at? Like a thirtieth of a second or a sixth? Tony told me that I needed to shoot at a higher shutter speed. At first, I wasn't sure what he meant. It's simple, Eddie. You need to use a faster shutter speed. A smaller amount of time, a smaller fraction of one second. Man, this fraction stuff is everywhere. I was a photographer. Most of my work is sports photography.
check this out. She shot the Jets playing football at the Meadowlands. Sometimes we can take the same subject and I'll shoot it many different ways to create different looks. If I want the image to be very sharp, I'll shoot it at 1 500th of a second. If I want the image to be blurred, I'll use the fraction of 1 30th of a second. We can take the same scene and create something totally different by using different fractions. It's not just the game. To me, it's more about the emotion of how these guys are feeling. When I'm out there shooting, what they feel, I'll feel, and then I'll know when to shoot it. And that's what I try to portray. So somebody like me who doesn't play can look at a picture and go, oh my god, that's incredible. note, shoot the next soccer game at 1 500th of a second. You're in for a real treat tonight, so put your hands together for Mr. Ndugu Chancellor. Ndugu is one of the greatest drummers in the world. At age six, I wanted to play drums. I made my own drums out of coffee cans or oatmeal boxes, and I just started to beat. By the time I was 16, I was playing with a number of local bands, and that was really the beginning of me seeing that if I put more time in this, went to college, studied hard, that I could do this as a profession. As a drummer, understanding fractions, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, is the most essential part of playing a drum part. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Your quarter note will be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then eighth notes you would add in your hi-hat. When you fill in, you play 16 notes. All of those notes are the basics for putting any beat together. For example, taking a rock beat or a funk beat, you would play heavy bottom in the bass drum and heavy beats two and four in the snare drum. swing. It's more of a finesse rhythm that flows. Hip-hop is basically a combination of two different beats. Shuffle. So the parts that each voice of the drum set plays are based on quarter notes, eighth note, sixteenth notes, the common language for all musicians. I've been fortunate to be able to still play music and it's something that I love. And to be able to do any job that you love and make a career and a living doing it is one of the greatest aspects of this life. My uncle's giving me drum. My mom's dad, we practice at his house.
Tony and Vincent ordered a pizza from Sal's, and I decided to have some fun. I think Eddie's right. If he says that Sal cuts him into nine slices of pizza, I think it's nine. Nobody cuts a pizza into nine slices. It's just not done. No? What? Did you ever count? No, have you? No, but then how do we know it can't be done? Because you cannot cut it evenly. It's a symmetrical shape. It's a circle. You cut a circle in half, you get two sides. You cut it again, you get four. You cut it again, you get six. You cut it one more time, and you get eight. Eight slices, not nine, eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Let's look. Let's look at it. Let's bet. Hmm, do you have your wallet with you? Yeah, do you? Well, I'm not gonna need mine, because I know there's eight slices in this box. Not I promised Aunt Rosa I'd come by. So I slipped out before the bet was settled. But as I walked out the door, I thought I saw Tony reaching for his wallet. Eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Eight. Nine. Let's I was look. starved when I got to Aunt Rosa's. So we ordered a pizza. You guessed it. Sal's. I decided to have some fun with her, too. I don't have to tell you who won the bet. It was just like Sal said, exactly nine slices. One extra for Hector. So now you know why the moon looks like a big pizza pie to me. You know, Sal told me that you can always judge a pizza by its fractions. Hmm. I wonder if Miss Tolliver eats it. Anyway, I guess it's time to close the files. I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be a big day.